we need more females in the sector. <laughs> we need more females in the ICT sector. There is no demand for women engineers as such as there are for women doctors. But there is always a demand for anyone who can do a good piece of work. How did you develop an interest in engineering? I enjoy mathematics in school and that's um, a foundation for engineering where you need to be able to solve problems and have an analytical skills. So that interest pulled me towards um, science. Um, I was more so interested in physics in high school and then moved on to university with that interest in engineering. Also in my younger days I'd like to um, maybe explore things, whether it be to make a flashlight or make some circuit from a younger childhood, so that interest was there. And what were the early years of your career like? Um, Career-wise, I started out, I guess, more so in interest in money when I left high school because I wasn't granted a student loan at my first application. So I worked for that year after leaving sixth form um, as a machine operator with Grace Cannon. And then I moved on from there, um, now obtaining the student loan, and did my diploma in the electrical engineering. Uh, after completing that course, I did a short stay at um, Crazy Gym. The correct name is Stewart's, um, I guess we can find that out later. And then from there, I spent just under a year. My application to JPS was um, noticed. I was calling for an interview and granted a position as a technician engineer in our substation department. And what are some of the challenges you have experienced in your career thus far? Uh, challenges are more so on the technical side where you have problems out there that needs to be solved so you have to apply what you have studied and I guess maybe a sense of natural instinct to find out how to come up with a cost effective because that's one of the constraints I guess for everybody to make sure that your solutions are also cost effective and to have them executed in a timely manner. Personally for me I think I have a good work relationship whether it be with superior or fellow um, engineers or, or line staff. I usually get support from um, the team whenever I have a project or a job to execute. So for me, I think I have a good work relationship and good support from the team I have to interact with. What's a typical work day for you like? Okay, um, presently, as a TND engineer, the department is engineering services. So the section that I focus on more so deals with projects. So for example, last year we had a power transformer at one of our substations in the western side of the island, Rosal substation, where we had to increase the capacity because as you're familiar with that side of Jamaica, it's a tourism belt. And as such, you project growth in that area, so there will be a greater demand for power in that area. So we had to replace that huge um, transformer with one that could better manage the loading demand that would be expected in the future year. So initial part of the year, I would be doing planning. So I'll be in office um, making my schedule, having the team dialogues, doing kickoff meetings, um, working with other personnel to have designs done for the replacement of the equipment, for civil works that will be required, and having all of that coordination at the beginning of the year. The transformer itself takes approximately nine months to be manufactured, so we have to be waiting on that while we do this groundwork. When it finally arrived in about October, November, that's when I was more present in the field, even though I've been be back and forth leading up to that, doing other activities. But then I would be there with the team, seeing through to the retirement of the existing, an assembly of new widgets, and we're maybe like a three days or so to retire. Then you have the assembly of the new, which can take you like close to a week, and you circulate the oil to make sure it's dry, 
and safe for energization, going through that process with the team on a day-by-day -day basis. So I both have office and field activities. What are your interactions generally like working with a group that is majority male? I believe I'm fortunate. I guess being a female, they tend to look out for me, um, check in, Nadri, are you okay? Is there anything I can help you with? So I've been fortunate where that is concerned to have um, good persons or good characters working with. My um, life choices were always aligned to that of the sciences. For a very long time, I toyed with the idea of being an environmentalist. Um, when I had applied, for that um, program at um, UTEC, when I received um, when I received word on my application, my mind then changed completely, mm -hmm. and it was actually my mother who said, and I can remember her words: "If you love IT so much, why don't you make it a profession?" Mm -hmm. And from there, it was on from there. I applied immediately to the VTDI, and I enrolled. I think a month after, hence that I and started the journey. How did you develop an interest in IT? Well, that started from high, uh, from, um, high school. Um, I think for any technical area, it takes one who has an investigative mind or a curious mind, right? And I've always been curious. I always, I'm always fascinated with how things work. And so from high school, um, IT was something that was quote-unquote easy for me. And um, I would spend hours at a time being on, just being on the computer trying. I remember one time um, I got into resolving my own computer issues, PC repairs and stuff like that. And so that kind of propelled, propelled me to do um, to go further into IT. And what were some of the challenges you faced pursuing studies in IT? <laughs> Depriving myself of sleep. Um, so with IT comes, you ha there is a lot of sacrifices they have to make. Mainly, bef mainly um, losing sleep, um, weekends, family time. Especially programming, you have times where I don't have a nine to five, and right now on the session I have my um, my manager with me. He's actually on vacation, and we're working on resolving an issue. So you really don't have um, much. Well, I mean, early start, family time, or weekends. So you have to sacrifice a lot of that time. But during my time at um, the VTDI, I had the opportunity of representing um, the. Ministry of Education, I know that they were embarking on a new, um, I think they were introducing animations in school and that's at the CSEC level. So I had the opportunity of representing them as an auditor to audit some of the um, facilities, high school facility. And I remember being there at the auditor going, I mean just around when um, school um, started, they had females there who had um, ambitions of going into IT, but you know it's a male dominated area. And I think they had that, um, there was some kind of reluctance. Like, Should I pursue this? This is really what men do. And I mean, um, I, after leaving that session, I had taken their emails and I had something like a mentorship program. So I'd ask them to, you know, we started out with web designs. So I'd take their personal emails and I've, I've shared um, open source code with them. And we, we had like a little rapport. So I know that, I know that now we have three persons who, went into IT actually. There's a female who went into programming and so I think that is to date is my biggest accomplishment. And what's a typical work day like for you? Wow. Um, so for one we don't have schedules. Um, we don't live by schedules because it's quite dynamic. Like ICT speak it's it's quite dynamic. So I'll have a plan day or a documented day and then come in the office and everything changes. So typically um, I start working on average at 7 o'clock in the mornings and on average I'll be maybe at 8 o'clock and that's on a good day. I've had times when I've left the office like 2 minutes after 2 to come back to office the following like 7 o'clock in the morning so we've had that kind of experience. And non-stop phone calls. But it's rewarding. I do go for female pursuing whatever it is that their arts desire is. And whether it be you are faced with um, discrimination or other challenges, if it's what you want, I think you should go for it. Even if you're discouraged along the way, go for what your passion, your art desires. And it might be an uphill task for some, it may not be that case only, but even if it is an uphill challenge, the reward will be there knowing 
that you're in a career that is contributing to the greater good of society, not necessarily looking at it as a male or female role, but knowing that this is the task I want to pursue, and irrespective of what um, stigma is attached to it, I will do it and do it well to the best of my ability. I was listening to an interview yesterday with Earl Moxon when he gave his remarks about um, Michael Sharp, and he had said that. Michael had said to him that the only thing that is standing in your way of journalism is you. And I would say the same for persons who wish to pursue um, a career in ICT. The only thing that's standing in your way is you. Um, it takes, you have to be determined, you have to be willing to make sacrifices. But I can tell you the rewards, they're great. Mm -hmm. They are great. So just be focused, um, be sure about what you want, and set small goals, and you should be fine.